And tonight on The Daily Wrap, the federal government is in control of your internet. Jihad Johnny is identified, and Speaker of the House John Boehner isn't budging on a deal that will fund the Department of Homeland Security. Plus, yay or nay, it's 6 p.m. Eastern in New York City. It's time for The Daily Wrap. Cool, right? That we actually have a blimp that's flying over the city right now to give you that visual. And joining me tonight on the Daily Wrap, he's a former Navy SEAL and a special agent for the FBI and now runs the security firm United States Continued Services. Jonathan Gilliam is here. John, thanks for joining us. Good to be here. She is a powerhouse litigator, really, from Philadelphia. Heather Hansen is back. Great to be back. And looking good. And he is a political pundit, humorist, and journalist. Rob Taub is making his Daily Wrap debut. Welcome, sir. Good to be here. I'm You're losing my voice, but it's coming back. You sound like Peter Brady in the, the 38th episode. <laughs> where Brenda Vaccaro, I right. think. This isn't a puberty actress. thing, I have a feeling. No, it's, it's anyway, talking quickly, too much on talk radio. Let's go to the Daily Download. Well, in less than two days, the Department of Homeland Security will face a shutdown due to a lack of funding. So what's the issue this time? Well, a holdup between Speaker John Boehner and the Senate regarding, of course, immigration. The Senate wants a Senate a clean bill, excuse me, that does not include riders that will stop the president's executive action on amnesty for millions of illegal immigrants. Speaker Boehner was mum on what the House would do if he gets a clean bill from the Senate. He just wants action. We passed a bill to fund the Department of Homeland Security six weeks ago. Six weeks ago. It's time for the Senate to act. Okay, the Speaker did say, though, that the blame should be placed on Democrats in the Senate and not Republicans. I just think it's outrageous that Senate Democrats are using Homeland Security funding uh, for blackmail to protect uh, the actions of the President, uh, where the President himself said he didn't have the authority to do this. Of course, Mr. Boehner would not be goaded into the House's hand if a clean bill is passed in the Senate. Plus, he got a little cheeky. Are you going to put it on the floor? Are you going to kill it? Are you going to let him vote on it? Have you even had this discussion? <laughs> well, we make decisions, I'll let you know. We passed a bill to fund the department six weeks ago. How <laughs> I many times do I have to say it? Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, oh, I'm sorry, I said majority, <laughs> minority, wow, that still takes some getting used to, said today that he believes the House is wasting everybody's time. We've had all kinds of rumors that the House is going to take our fully funded bill and send it back with a number of writers on it. It is a waste of time. We will not allow a conference to take place. It won't happen. I don't know if it's crazy people. It's like an eighth grade civic class. I mean, what is going on in the House? And if the president does get a bill that attempts to shut down his executive order on immigration, this is what he will do. So in the short term, if uh, Mr. McConnell, the uh, leader of the Senate, uh, and the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, uh, want to have a vote on whether what I'm doing is legal or not, they can have that vote. I will veto that vote because I'm absolutely confident that what we're doing is the right thing to do. Well, Heather Hansen, Speaker Boehner is holding or throwing up uh, Senate Democrats as far as they're the ones that are the ones that are holding this up. But let's face it, I mean, this is more of a Republican Republican problem between the Senate Republicans and Senate, Senate uh, Repo I'm sorry, House Republicans. It is ridiculous to me that they never went on the offense. It was constantly on the defense. From the time of the first filibuster, they should have been out there saying that Democrats are putting amnesty before security. And by the way, amnesty may make our nation less secure. Every time that they filibustered, all four times they should have been doing that they should have been pushing their story as opposed to being on the defense and not having a story to say so now they look like you know today's Pew study came out and only 26 percent of Americans have approval of our Republicans in Congress they need to put a story forward as opposed to just being on the recipients of o President Obama's story 26 percent actually is pretty high I've seen numbers 9 10 percent well compared to Obama's going up 48 percent today yeah. so you know you're seeing that there is a something the stories that are being told are really showing a decrease for the Republicans and somehow President Obama is actually improving in people's eyes. So the story has to be told that there is 
security is going to the wayside, amnesty is being made a priority, and that is a problem for this country. Wow, Jonathan, it seems like November was, you know, years ago where there were gains, obviously, in the mm -hmm. Senate. They, they control the Senate now. Right. Gains in the House. And yet, all this infighting, uh, I mean, w what, what happens here at this point? What side of the party wins this battle? Well, I'll tell you who's going to lose it in 2016. 2016 is going to be the Republicans if they don't get their act together. And, you know, but <laughs> I see this video every time when we were on here, they have these videos of these different individuals that have been in, in politics for 30 years. Um, they just need, these people need to go away because what I'm not seeing here is effective leadership. I'm not seeing things fixed. It's all, let's scam this, let's get this in there. And to me, we're just looking at two groups of basic organized crime syndicates that are working for themselves. And this net neutrality, the DHS bill, all this stuff is just, uh, it's just a sign of people that don't know how to actually lead. They just know how to do politics. Rob, should the speaker just punt on this one and pass a clean bill? No, it's, it is criminal behavior, but it's not organized. Uh, <laughs> and as for both houses of Congress, I have, I'm going to quote Robert De Niro from Raging Bull. I'm disgusted with the two of you. Uh, it's, it's just... It sounded just like him when you said that. <laughs> I, I, you know, good things happen sometimes. Maybe I can get some more voiceover work. Um, I, I just think that it's, it's time for them to be reactive, or, or proactive rather than reactive. And... Uh, you know, enough name calling at Obama. They have to do something, otherwise his stock is gonna rise, which it is. And to be so flip about it, you know, to kiss it off when, when, the, when they're asking about it. I mean, for th these are important issues. We're not talking about anything that is minor. We're talking about security of our nation and we're talking about immigration reform, things that are important to a lot of people. And to just name call and to kiss it off is really doing a disservice or, to the issues. Or to just say, I'll just veto it. Or in other right. cases like the DHS bill, they say, if we don't get what we want, we'll just put it in another bill. I mean, that's the problem. You know, you don't take something that isn't fixed and sneak it into another bill, or you don't just say, I'm going to veto it if they don't give, it, give me what I want. These people need to start fixing stuff and working for us like we sent them there to do, um, or else they just need to be fired, um, you know, put in jail. I don't know what you do with them, but they, they just need to be... Fortunately, you stuck with them for a while because there was just an election recently, that's, so that's the that's, only way you fire them, That's right? the biggest... It's true, and that's the problem. If you were my attorney... If you were my attorney, better, and you, better example, and you better. didn't, and you didn't do lawyer. the job that I hired you for, I can, and you go out and you totally defame me, I can sue you for malpractice. Right, and fire me. And fire you. Rob, 15 seconds, last word. It's like trying to fire a doctor in the middle of an operation. You can't do it. We're right. stuck with them. Right. <laughs> right. Boy, that's an unsettling thought. That yeah. is. Yeah. You're fired. Oh, is anybody going to take over? <laughs> no, you're right about that. In 2016, boy, you're right. That's going yes. to have a big effect. Coming up next, Dr. Ben Carson blows the roof off of CPAC. We got Rick Unger there. We really do. Daily Wrap, only on Newsmax TV. Attention homeowners. Quicken Loans has some very important information regarding the U.S. government's Home Affordable Refinance Program, or HARP. We've told you about HARP in the past, and we're happy to report that nearly 3 million homeowners have already taken advantage of this fantastic money-saving program. But there are so many more of you who could be saving hundreds of dollars every month on your mortgage. Quicken Loans is here to help you save your money. Why Quicken Loans? The home loan experts at Quicken Loans fully understand the HARP guidelines. We'll work with you to understand your specific circumstances and strive to find the financial solution that's best for you. Then we'll guide you through each step of the mortgage refinance process to make sure that it's both simple and easy. And for five years in a row now, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. And this year, for the first time, they've also ranked us highest in the nation in mortgage servicing. If you're not familiar with HARP, it's a U.S. government program designed specifically for homeowners who have little or no equity. A great feature of the HARP program is that most HARP refinance loans do not require an appraisal and there are fewer income verification requirements. That makes it simpler, easier, and even faster. And even if you've been denied for a HARP loan in the past, new guidelines mean that you now may be eligible. Give us a call and we'll give you a Quicken Loans Mortgage Review. And we'll do all we can to help you save money on your mortgage. It's simple and easy. So find out if you're eligible to take advantage of today's incredibly low interest rates and start saving money 
every month on your mortgage. Call Quicken Loans today or go to quickenloans.com for a mortgage experience that's engineered to amaze. To you, they're more than just a pet. So protect them with Canine Advantix 2. It's broad spectrum protection, kills fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes too. So get your Canine Advantix 2 at 1-800-PETMEDS today and save 20%. Plus, free shipping. Call or order online at 1-800-PETMEDS.com. Canine Advantix 2, for the love of dogs. Welcome back to The Daily Wrap. I'm Joe Concha, joined by Jonathan Gilliam, Heather Hansen, and Rob Taub. Thanks again for being here, guys. Well, the Conservative Political Action Committee Conference, also known as CPAC, I bet you didn't know the acronym there, kicked off yesterday in Washington, D.C. Okay, it's actually in Maryland, at a, Maryland, at a, a beautiful uh, national harbor, by the way. Uh, just tremendous uh, facilities there. And they actually even have a bar that has uh, one of those riding bull things. So I yeah, went on that Rick's three years ago. Busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's where Rick was last night. Uh, but that's just a small detail. Anyway, in case you're not familiar with CPAC, it's the biggest annual conference for conservatives. So who is there? Who isn't there is more the question. Ben Carson, Senator Rand Paul, Senator Ted Cruz, Governor Rick Perry, and others will be speaking at CPAC trying to win the hearts and minds of mainstream and not so mainstream Republicans to get the lowdown on this year's CPAC. We are joined now by our very own Rick Unger. Rick, set the scene, if you will, via phone, please. And we've lost Rick, it looks Hello? like. There we go. Or do we got you, buddy? His lips aren't moving. Oh, that's a still picture? Okay. Usually his face is kind I of I can hear like nobody, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I only can hear you. Okay. We'll talk to look, uh, talk to Rick a little bit later in the in the show, guys, and, until we uh, we fix the, now, the technical now difficulties. Now I hear Joe. Oh, you got me. Now I hear Joe. Okay, great. So, Rick, mini bar, yes, pigs I'm in here. the blanket. <laughs> Tell us how things are going there so far. I am here amidst the crowd of people coming out of the auditorium where they just listened to Sarah Palin speaking. Really, and I'm sure you were front and center on that one. Well, I dropped by. Yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. Give us the mood there overall. You know, uh, the Republicans took back the Senate in 2014, clearly in November. Uh, they control the House. Uh, you have uh, perhaps a vulnerable Hillary Clinton as a possible opponent in 2016. I'm sure that there's some spirited conversations going on there. Well, you know, it's very interesting because you would expect, as you just noted, they'd, there'd be a lot of happy folks around here with the Republicans taking control of Congress. And they're certainly not unhappy, but I will tell you, compared to last year, there is a bit more sense of tension here. Uh, last year really had much more of a, an aggressive party atmosphere, where this year there's just this bit of tension, and I think it might be coming from a few places. Uh, first of all, there's disagreement over candidates, but that's to be expected. But what I really see happening here, and it's something that's going to get very, very interesting tomorrow, there is what I would call a groundswell of opposition among the conservatives here to a candidacy of Jeb Bush, to the point where my sources are telling me that there's a protest plan when Governor Bush is here to uh, speak tomorrow where they're talking about either standing up and turning their back on him or walking out in the middle of the speech. But really? they're, they're discussing how to protest Jeb Bush. Uh, and, and that may be playing into this. So they're going to give him the, the uh, de Blasio treatment at CPAC? Boy. Well, that, that's one of the things that I heard discussed today. And, and we were just discussing in, in, in the last segment that <laughs> Republican uh, House and Republican Senate can't get along too well in different factions of the party. I mean, I, that, that's, right. that would be quite a visual on every cable news network, including this one, if that happened tomorrow. Yes, it would be an extraordinary uh, visual. And it'll be very interesting to see 
if it does end up happening. And, um, and you're still the, in. You're still actually at the event. They haven't thrown you out yet in any capacity. Then. Oh no! They. I have to tell you, they are very nice to me here, which I get a big kick out of. They walk up to me and say, "You know, I hate everything you say on TV, but you seem like a nice guy. You want to get your picture taken with me?" Um, they're, they treat me very well. I've had a great time. So we heard uh, about Jeb Bush, Rick, uh, but nice who? People. Who's getting the most buzz right now from what you can see from, from conservatives there? Is it Ben Carson? My, Is it my, Ted Cruz? My guess would be when we get to the uh, straw poll um, results on Saturday, I think you're going to see Ben Carson doing extremely well. I think you're going to see Ted Cruz doing extremely well. Uh, and there'll probably be some Scott Walker. But I, you know, from the people I'm talking to, the regular attendees, the, the popular favorites would very much appear to be Dr. Carson, and Senator Cruz. Wow, that's it's 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 so surprising the names that you hear out of there, and then you look at more nationwide polls, and and, and the delta between the two is remarkable. I'm just going right. to throw to a soundbite here, real uh, real quick, Rick. Earlier this week, uh, Governor Scott Walker, who you mentioned before, he took a shot at Governor Jeb Bush when he said this. Unlike some out there, I didn't inherit fame or fortune from my family. And Tuesday night on Greta Van Susteren's show on Fox, Governor Walker was asked if it was a little too early to go after Mr. Bush. Is it a little bit early to take a slap at an opponent? Well, I'm not. I mean, from my standpoint, people have heard me talk about my narrative for years, long before there was even a thought of, of uh, potentially running for office uh, at this level. I've talked about the fact that uh, unlike others out there, I'm not talking about candidates, just people in general inherited fame or inherited fortune. And what I got from my parents and my grandparents was the belief that if you work hard and play by the rules, you can do and be anything you want. Now, there's plenty of people, regardless of economic background, that got that, regardless of their political heritage that got that. That discussion was all about my narrative, not about anybody else's. Okay, and do we still have Rick Unger on the phone? I know we had some technical you difficulties do. there. Excellent, sir. So what's on the agenda for tonight? 30 seconds. Uh, tonight is going to be a lot of drinking, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Nothing that would interest you, Joe. Right, right. Wow, Rick Unger on the road and getting overserved. <laughs> what a shock. We have to leave you now, Rick, so have fun with those apple martinis, and we'll, we'll Bye, talk Rick. to you soon, I'll buddy. I'll talk to you all tomorrow night. Miss you all. Okay, good to see you. Uh, well, the latest uh, re National Republican poll, uh, excuse me, the latest National Republican poll from public policy polling, say that fast five times, finds, and let's put it up on the screen, Governor Scott Walker surging at 25%. And there we have Dr. Ben Carson at 18, Jeb Bush at a surprising 17%, and Governor Mike Huckabee somehow at 10%. Rounding out the field are Chris Christie and Ted Cruz at 5, Rand Paul at 4, Rick Perry and Marco Rubio at 3, and I don't even see Ohio Governor John Kasich on there, who, as we know, will eventually win the nomination if he runs. You heard it here first, but only from me, of course, maybe not from my panel. So, uh, quickly, guys, we only have a minute. Are you surprised that Scott Walker is surging? Well, sort of and sort of not. I mean, he kind of comes off as the normal guy out there, you know. But the fact is, what I see across the board with all these people, with the exception of Dr. Carson, are people who went from high school to college into politics. Mm -hmm. and when I did my research on them and I started looking at them, there's no life experience in any of these leaders. And I have a problem with that. What do you think about Carly Fiorina? She's, she's got some life experience, right? She has right? some life experience. You know, the problem I have, or the thing I like about Dr. Ben Carson is that he doesn't subscribe to party lines, technically. Uh, no can I interject? Things. Sure. I think that Scott Ten Walker seconds. is a fresh face. Mm -hmm. uh, people that attend CPAC think the world is still flat. So the rest of the country is going to lean more towards somebody like Walker. He's backed by the people that backed Romney and he's succeeded in a very liberal state. Certainly seems to have the momentum right now. Well, coming up next on The Daily Wrap, your internet just got regulated by the federal government. This is The Daily Wrap only on Newsmax TV. Henry Repeating Arms is a family-owned business. My family has been in the gun business since 1911. At Henry, we take great pride in sourcing American-made materials like gun barrel quality steel from Ohio, extruded steel and brass castings from Pittsburgh, the finest American walnut from Missouri, and deliver an American-made rifle that you would be proud to own. And that's the vow of Henry that'll be made in America. But it won't be made at all. And you gotta love something that's made in America. This is the best rifle I've ever owned.
Call now for a free Henry catalog and decal, including a list of dealers in your area, so you can own your own piece of American history. Call or log on now. Henry! Hi, Mark Gill here for the Miracle Peeler, the new dual blade peeler that effortlessly peels on one side and easily juliennes on the other. Watch. The ultra-sharp peeling blades work in both directions, slicing your prep time in half. Peel just a thin layer of skin from potatoes and veggies with no waste. Quickly and easily peel eggplant in seconds. Even peel carrots in both directions. That's twice the peeling in half the time. Then, with a simple flip, julienne carrots to top a salad. Or julienne zucchini for healthy veggie noodles. The secret is the dual blade design that peels veggies on one side and juliennes on the other. With a non-slip rubberized grip and blades so sharp, you can peel with just two fingers. So strong, they can peel the skin of this pineapple. Even butternut squash is no match for the Miracle Peeler. Guaranteed to never dull, tough enough to cut wood, yet precise enough to peel tomato skin so thin in, you can read through it. Shred cabbage for homemade coleslaw. You can even slice with Miracle Peeler. Hard cheese, soft cheese, any cheese with ease. And it's dishwasher safe. Now, get the Miracle Peeler and recipe guide for just $10. You'll also get our mandolin slicer attachment free. Just snap in the Miracle Peeler and slice carrots and more directly into a bowl. Complete with veggie holder so you get the very last slice. Slice potatoes for homemade chips and more. You can even slice toppings for pizza or slice onions for a quick stir fry. Call now and we'll double the offer free. Just pay price processing and handling. But I'm not stopping there. You'll also get the razor sharp easy glide knife absolutely free. Cutting cheese is a breeze and because it's aerated, nothing sticks. So sharp, watch it slice through this tomato without breaking the skin. Perfectly sliced potatoes. You get it all. Two miracle peelers with recipe guides, two mandolin slicer attachments with veggie holders and the easy glide knife for just $10. Call now. To order your miracle peeler, you can call 1-800-541-3710 or go online to miraclepeeler.com. Call 1-800-541-3710. 5413710 or go online to miraclepeeler.com. Order now. I'm really into this car, but how do I know if I'm getting a good deal? True Car knows exactly how much people have been paying for the car I want. I tell True Car my zip and what car I'm into, and it shows me the True Car curve. This shows the range of prices people in my area actually paid for the same car. Looks like these folks paid a little more than everyone else. And this guy got the deal of a lifetime. This is how car buying was always meant to be. This is True Car. You can join millions of Americans turning off the old media for Newsmax TV. We're in over 40 million homes on DirecTV Channel 349, Dish Channel 223, and Verizon Fios Channel 115. And we're available online at NewsmaxTV.com or on Roku and Google TV. Plus, you can watch us anywhere in the world. Just download our free Newsmax TV app from your iPhone or Android. Do it today and find out why millions are tuning in Newsmax TV. For real news, better talk. And welcome back to Daily Wrap. I'm Joe Concha, joined by Jonathan Gilliam, Heather Hansen, and Rob Taub. Well, last year, the Obama administration drafted more than, get this, 75,000 pages of regulations on the United States, and that happened in 2014. Since taking office, the president has created 21,000 new regulations, give or take 1,000, and is averaging around 3,500 per year. That, I believe, is an ACC conference record. Well, now it's time to add another regulation into the mix. This time, the Internet. Yes, the FCC voting along party lines three to two to approve new sweeping regulations that will regulate the Internet. Net neutrality is here to stay. And the Internet will be regulated just like your phone, gas, and electric service. The idea is to keep the big Internet providers providing equal service for all content creators and customers. Heather Hansen, let's start with you. We always talk about limiting government's reach. Do you believe the FCC overstepped its bounds here? Absolutely, and stepped all over the Constitution while they were doing it. Wow. They're going to have some major legal challenges here. You've got a First Amendment argument because these providers are speaking when they're transmitting messages. And to censor them and tell them what messages they can transmit mm -hmm. violates the First Amendment. Taking clause of the Fifth Amendment, huge argument there because this is property. They're taking property without paying it back. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see some serious challenges, but in the meantime, you know, courts take time. In the meantime, we're going to have to deal with government oversight for a little while. Point of parliamentary procedure. All right, I'm going to call myself as a witness right now. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm, a, I'm just a dumb guy. I, I host a show. I don't know anything about 
the legal aspects that you're speaking of. Here's what I do know. When I try to watch House of Cards, which premieres tonight at midnight, by the way, everybody. Yeah. Okay? And I watch it at home on my smart TV. And that means I'm, I'm getting the internet right through to my TV. For whatever reason, every time, Netflix, I'm about 20 minutes in, and it stops. And I gotta, I gotta reboot, and I gotta go back to the place I was, and I know <laughs> that my cable provider, who I will not name, is throttling down Netflix. I see the other argument that, that the big boys are controlling their video on demand. Those movies never fail. Netflix, for whatever reason, or Hulu, for whatever reason, always craps out. Well, and that's why the free market has to has to rule, though. Mm -hmm. But you can't have the government taking um, taking sides and stepping in. They're going to have to be the ones now to regulate the agreements between Netflix and the provider companies. Oh. And they have to decide whether or not these agreements are just and reasonable. Do you want the government making those types of decisions, given their track record? I just don't think that it's going to... First of all, I don't think it's good for free market. But more importantly, I don't think it's going to pass with regards to the legalities of it. I think that the constitutional arguments are strong. Hmm. Problem. Well, I'll use uh, Uber as an example of what something that came into existence because the government mismanaged Uber. The thing that you call for you need a ride. Yes, okay. Taxi and Limousine Commission in New York City is an antiquated government entity mm -hmm. that operates like it did in the 1960s. There's no technology. The cabs are dirty. The drivers are bad. It's all operated on fines, levies, taxes. And rules, but you can watch Jeopardy in the back seat. <laughs> you can watch, right, you can watch a loop of Jeopardy. But that's basically and, the only improvement. I, I and go so, the, the value of a medallion has gone down by half a million dollars, mm -hmm. and the government has overregulated an industry to the point where it's collapsing. And instead of saying, "Gee, maybe we should do what Uber does," they instead want to try and regulate Uber. That's interesting. Jonathan, I know you're always for bigger government, and surely you oh, agree yeah. with the, <laughs> Absolutely. the, the and decision. Absolutely. And I love the term just and reasonable. When, uh, yes. That deserves to, to not be anywhere in this conversation when it comes to any of this stuff. I mean, the, the fact that uh, a politician attaches their name to a bill um, automatically uh, eliminates my love for that bill at all, no matter who it is. I, I just think if people go out and they set out to do what's right, or as you wrote it, you said it just and reasonable, um, it's not going to be the Obama care bill. It's not going to be, you know, the net neutrality bill that Obama once put through. See, that's, th that's the problem that I have here is that none of this stuff is being fixed. Look, when my phone bill starts to get close or my cable bill, you'll start to see those, you know, slips where it starts to get slower and the internet boots slower. Um, that's one thing, but I don't really see them fixing anything. If they're going to regulate this, they better regulate it better than the electric companies, which Obama himself said when he first took office that, that he was going to make these things go skyrocketing and that's just the way it would be and it would be best for everybody. Well, that's not the regulation that I want to see if that's what they're going to be putting through. Interesting. Heather, what, I, what bothered me a little bit about this process, there was no transparency whatsoever. Well, it was just a secret little vote between five people and John, done. John, you've Over. said it so well and they asked Wheeler, they asked the chairman to come and speak to them mm -hmm. and he wouldn't do it. And there's some question as to whether or not the White House had any influence on this and I think that you're going to see some investigation into that and? but it's ultimately it's got to be legislation and not rules passed by a committee could you educate the audience on what mr wheeler did in a private private life uh, or a private existence i'm sorry a previous life mr wheeler you know what i don't know what he did before. really i know what he did in what was that existence. he was a lobbyist for all the <laughs> uh the major cable companies. ah well see there you go yeah so he might have a little skin in the game here yeah, right. it's, it, is, it is beyond comprehension that he refuses to come and discuss the process by which this happened. And that is our final word on that segment. Coming up next, it's time for some potluck. This is The Daily Wrap, only on Newsmax TV. Right now, we have big problems in America. Our veterans are being forgotten. Instead of coming home to the support they gave so much for, they're finding empty promises. They're missing the medical treatment they were promised, the jobs they need to survive, the benefits they fought for. But even worse, every day, 22 veterans are dying because what little help they're getting is coming too late. It's time we do what Americans have always done when someone needs help. We get her done. There's an organization that is doing all they can to help our veterans. 
the American Legion. Because of the monthly donations from Americans just like you, the American Legion has helped represent over 700,000 VA benefit claims for veterans. In this past year alone, they have helped over 800 veterans find good jobs. And they're breaking through the backlog and standing by our veterans until they get the medical help they so desperately need. Our veterans have given us so much. It's time we as Americans repay that debt. Your call lets our veterans know you haven't forgotten their service. Call or go online right now to stand with the American Legion in their fight to get our veterans what they deserve. When you pledge your support of just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, the American Legion will send you this patriotic commemorative coin. Carry it with pride, knowing that you are helping fulfill the promises we all made to our veterans. Please join us as we stand with the American Legion right now, and then rally your friends and family to answer the call as well. Please call or go online today before another veteran is lost to empty promises. Have you or a loved one been prescribed the blood thinner Xarelto? Xarelto has been linked to serious injuries, including internal bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding, bleeding of the brain, cerebral hemorrhage, and even death. If you or a loved one use the drug Xarelto and have experienced serious injuries, you may be entitled to a cash award. Call the number on your screen now for a free consultation. Call 1-800-478-7009. That's 1-800-478-7009. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. And welcome back to the Daily Wrap. It is potluck time. This is the part of the show where we go around the table and share our favorite stories of the day. And since we always go right to left, Jonathan Gilliam, you are head chef this evening. Well, you know, now I'm hungry uh, because uh, you said I'm from the South. And whenever mm -hmm. you say potluck, I'm expecting there to be some kind of casserole in front of me. What's but, your favorite meal? Uh, overall, yeah, lasagna. Well, lasagna, lasagna. Lasagna and um, filet mignon. I was about to say steak had to be in the top two, two. easily. Those, I could eat those every day. You should have both at the same time. I have had both. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> anyway, before we go off on a tangent, all you? So, you know, I have a real um, issue that's going on. I kind of allude back to this a lot is that, you know, we really do have a world war going on right now. And to me, it's a two-pronged war. We have uh, a 14-year-old resurgence of, a reemergence of, uh, fundamental Islam, which I like to call it Mohammedism. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same Islam that was practiced before uh, the Sunni and Shia split. Uh, same tactics, same uh, techniques, and same drive and motivation. Um, and that has spread all over the world. Literally, it's the first unconventional war, world war, that has ever existed. Because now, we see, unconventional tactics normally only work in one area. Yeah, because before modern technologies, you couldn't spread all, fear all over the world. Now, in an instant, you know, you can cut someone's head off and spread it all over the world. Social and media. When we talk about Jihadi, Jihadi John, who they've now, um, you know, told everybody who he is, mm -hmm. I look at that as about as significant as each of the individuals that he beheads. That it's a human life and that's significant, but over the overall fight for this war, it doesn't really do anything if we rescue one person or if they get killed. We need to start, you know, battling this entire uh, movement. And so Jihadi John is a, is a thing that they can pump up and say, hey, we're doing this or we're doing that, uh, the politicians that is, and it, but it really doesn't do anything for the overall picture. The other thing that I did want to say though, is that we, this is a two front war just like in World War II. The other front is the progressive socialist movement, and it's spread in all, all over the world into, these, into our government systems and in an effort to take it over, just like communism tried to do, but they're actually su successful at doing it. We have them in our administration today. We have one uh, that's our president, and uh, they take so advantage. you're comfortable calling President Obama a socialist? Anybody that is not 
willing to look at that as either uh, trying to side with him because they agree with him or they haven't done their homework and investigate. I'm a trained investigator. Mm -hmm. I look at the facts. I let the facts, you know, guide my opinions. And uh, I'm like Rick Unger in the way that I look at things uh, and I try to find out what the solutions are to these, a solution-based thinker. When you do investigations, you try to look at what the reality of this situation is. If you look at President Obama, you look at what he ran on, you look at the, the, the way that he stands against his country, and listen, I agree 100% with what Giuliani said, with the exception of I don't think that he stuck by his guns enough. I like Giuliani. But I do believe that this president does not like this country, period. That is a great potluck. Normally we discuss things, but that was a, it that was very definitive. That was a rant. You, you served it up. <laughs> and you're, you're bigger than all of us, so I'm not about to, to, to argue that. Uh, and we do two potlucks uh, in this segment. And uh, you have about two minutes for yours. Right. You, got, you get to follow the Beatles on well, that Well, and it, it kind of goes well, some of the same lines. Mm -hmm. In Austria, the parliament passed a bill that said that in Amman, anyone who heads a mosque has got to be able to speak German and cannot take foreign funding. And this is something that they started even before what happened in France and what happened in Denmark, but it passed and France is looking at something similar, Switzerland and I think Denmark is as well. And it made me wonder whether or not, I know we have the separation of church and state here obviously, but if you have foreign funded mosques, does that apply to them? You know, we don't allow foreign corporations to donate to political campaigns. We don't allow foreign people to donate to political campaigns. So there are certain uh, constitutional rights that aren't extended that far. And is that something that we're going to see in our future? Mm. Rob, any thoughts on that? Well, I'm Jewish, so I'm always concerned about that. Um, there are synagogues in this country where only Hebrew is spoken. So uh, not that they're necessarily foreign funded, but it just comes to me as, as a right in this country of free speech, whether you're a foreign or domestic. What, what do you think it will do to the relationship between the mosques and the law enforcement in the, in the society? Because that's one of the arguments t for this Austrian bill, was to say that it will improve those relationships because now we are trying to make it a sort of a kinder, gentler Islam. Well, then again, we're getting into government control. Well, right, okay. and that's why here it would be difficult to pass. But we do limit those types of things in certain circumstances. So there could arguably be a slippery slope there. I, I saw a story today as well about the Mississippi cops are now being trained uh, to speak Spanish. It's mandatory that they know how because mm -hmm. of the influx of immigrants that much into that state. So instead of learning, hey, here's here's how you engage somebody who may be robbing a liquor store, it's, right. you know, now you have to know how to say yo no say and, 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 and you know how to speak Spanish in general. Well, listen, the law enforcement needs to start thinking outside the box. And if that's the people who are going to be coming there because this government has allowed them to, then they're going to have to start reacting to that. And that's our last word in a segment that was dominated by uh, Mr. Gilliam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, we have to take a quick break, but we'll have more political potluck. This is The Daily Wrap, only on Newsmax TV. Hi, I'm Matt McCoy. How long have you had your car insurance? I ask because I had mine for over 20 years before I switched and saved hundreds with the AARP Auto Insurance Program from the Hartford. I was with my previous insurance uh, for 30 years, but they could not compete with the Hartford. People 50 and over could save hundreds of dollars when they switch. I had done a lot of comparison shopping. The rate was like half of what I was paying. $404 is the average amount folks save when they switch to the AARP Auto Insurance Program from the Hartford. You know what makes me wonder why everyone 50 and over hasn't switched? Nine out of ten AARP members who switch to the Hartford from companies like Allstate, State Farm, and GEICO all get a lower rate with the Hartford. So call 1-800-684-1685 or go to GoHartfordAuto.com for your free quote. If you're not already an AARP member, the Hartford can help you join in minutes. Let me tell you what else the Hartford does. They promise not to drop you even if you're in an accident. It's called lifetime renewability, and it's included with your policy. It's a great feeling to know that they're not gonna drop you for that reason. And if by chance you're ever injured in an accident, the Hartford has a benefit called Recover Care. This will help cover the cost of having someone do your grocery shopping, your house cleaning, lawn care, even walk your dog. 
They were there when we got the insurance, and they were there when we needed it, and we really appreciate that. Save $404 on average, get lifetime renewability, and recover care. Call the Hartford at 1-800-684-1685 now. That's 1-800-684-1685. Or go to GoHartfordAuto.com today. Get this free calculator just for requesting a quote. How do you shape your eyebrows? I just pluck my own and occasionally I'll go to the salon. Introducing NAD's Facial Wand Eyebrow Shaper. Sculpt absolutely perfect eyebrows absolutely anywhere in just minutes. No muss, no fuss, no heat, and complete control. The facial wand gives me a lot of control when I'm applying it. No, it didn't hurt at all. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> it looks like she did it in the salon. For eye-catching eyebrows, get Nad's Facial Wand Eyebrow Shaper today. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic. Some will never return. With thy blessing, we shall prevail over the unholy forces of our enemy. Thy will be done. Almighty God. Amen. And welcome back to The Daily Wrap. I am your host, Joe Concha. And if you're just joining us, we're in the middle of our potluck dinner where we share our favorite stories of the day. Rob, what is your culinary well, masterpiece? I read a great piece today by Rich Lowry in the National Review where he kicks it off by saying, let the climate inquisition begin. He is comparing liberal attitude towards climate change to anybody that disagrees with them to a new level of McCarthyism. And uh, I think he's right. I think it's unfair because you're not allowed to have a dissenting opinion. That's their way of saying we don't love our country. Oh, you disagree that climate change is happening to the degree we say, well, then you don't love America. Uh, Mark Twain said everybody talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. I don't see anything being done except a lot of fear-mongering with liberals and climate change. Uh, I, look, I grew up in New Jersey. We had to drive up and down the turnpike. When I was a kid, my father used to say, hold your breath, because the right, pollution around is so bad. 13, it's, it's gotten not nice. It's better. I'm, I'm for a good ecology and taking care of our country, but I don't think that it should be used as a political tool which is uh, what I think Obama's doing. Well, and it's become about politics in every way, politics and money. You know, we talk about the research and the people who are doing the research are being paid by the climate companies. It's sort of like big pharma, where some of these doctors are being paid by the pharmaceutical companies. When you, th those things come together. When you've got money and politics and power influencing science, it can never be a good idea. Well, the, the, the contrarian argument is that science has settled the issue that there is climate change or the earth is warming. I think, to your point, and I completely agree with you, what is the degree as to which it's warming? Is it something that we need to take care of right now? Is there a sense of urgency? Or is it something that is manageable? And I, I think that's, you're exactly right. Whenever you bring up like, well, it's not that big of a deal. How dare you say that? Because New York, if you, if you read some stories in the 80s, we should all be underwater right now. Right. On, on Manhattan Island and Miami shouldn't exist. And you know, watch Al Gore's uh, documentary sometime. The uh, Earth has been in existence for billions of years. And they're saying, we're going to destroy it in 100. Uh, it's, it's ludicrous if you look at it in those terms. It's ludicrous if you look at my backyard. I have not seen, I saw grass for the first time today in like a month and a half. Yeah, I have and a sore crazy. throat because it's been 21 below zero outside for right. two weeks. Right, but you can't bring that up because yeah. uh, it's cold, but it's, 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 it doesn't count. And the last, wi last winter was no picnic either, by the way. Uh, so, uh, I like the way you say fear-mongering because that, you, you hit the nail on the head here when it comes to liberal politicians and conservative politicians. I know there's people with liberal views and conservative views, but, you know, like I've gone on shows before and been accused of fear-mongering because I talk about this war on terror and it's, be, you know, it's really a global war. But the difference is I have a solution for that. My, I have, I, I'm saying this because I want people to be informed. When it comes to climate change, it's there is no solution based on any of this stuff. Carbon trading? What I mean, what is that the solution? That's a money making scheme. Because the problem is put a tax on it. We could do right. as much as we like here in the US. I think China's gonna follow along and they're the biggest polluters going. Right. So unless you have a worldwide solution, right. it's all symbolism. You know, as you said, so I'm going to give myself the last word because you'll, you'll learn quickly that I like my airtime on this. <laughs> and we're only down to two minutes and 45 seconds and talk about my potluck. 
And here's the question panel. Should drones be banned in major cities? All right, they are in Washington, uh, they are in Paris, not in New York. Now, I want to throw this directly to you. Mm -hmm. Will drones eventually be used as weapons? You attach a bomb to it. I got my little remote control over in Jersey City. I fly over and I go right into the Empire State Building with it. Can that cause a lot of damage? I just think it's, it could totally be a terrorist weapon. We're already droning people or we're droning terrorists over in the Middle East. Right. So who's to say they can't turn that around on us in some urban environment with some remote control from, well, I can't say Radio Shack, it's gone bankrupt, but some sort of remote control. <laughs> Well, you just asked the question and answered it yourself I because, did? yeah, and that's great. You know, it makes my job easier. So you, you basically, <laughs> you have, you said that, that uh, can drones be used as, as weapons? And then you say, you know, over in the Middle East, we are actually using drones as weapons. Right. I mean, They're bigger yeah. than, than yeah. the... Yeah, but listen, those. let me tell you something. There's ones they have now that can carry a 200-pound load on it so that they can deliver packages. So if that's the case, 200 pounds of explosives, um, when the Times Square uh, bomber attempted to blow up uh, Times Square, but he was an idiot and it fizzled out, mm -hmm. thank goodness, um, that was a 250-pound bomb. Wow. That could have killed at, at a particular time that he put that, 6.30 on a Saturday where he put it, he probably could have killed more people than were killed in the uh, Twin Tower attack. Well, so, so this is where we need government regulation. This is the one time I want to see an executive order. They should not, they not fly them over any That's city. why it should be banned, Period. because there'll be a banned. government commission on drones. Otherwise, and they'll just wreck everything. Well, the news came out today that the Secret Service is now flying drones around Washington but they're today. Federal, they're, but, but they're doing control. it to, I think, to try to counter and find out where the drones are, how they can intercept them. They're talking about using wireless routers to try and scramble the signal. They signals. need to figure it out because they've so landed they, one in the White well, House Well, that's about right. Two I mean, clearly, ago. you're mm -hmm. right. Whether it's regulation or whether it's investigation, to figure out what the heck is going on because we just don't know enough. And then not even cities, but then it could be on the, the campaign trail. And let's say there's a candidate in Iowa somewhere. Mm -hmm. You fly it out of one field and right into the crowd. And I just... That scares the hell out of me. And, I, and to your They're point, now you scared me more. They're you a are a fear monger. <laughs> and on that note, that's all the time we have for our potluck tonight. But when we come back, it's yay or nay. This is the Daily Wrap, making you sleep very well at night. And it's only here on Newsmax TV from very cold New York City, despite climate change. You know, just before retirement, I had that uh-oh moment. It is not a great feeling. I worked hard, I saved money, but then I realized I wasn't going to have enough. If you're age 62 or older and facing a financial gap, your home's equity could provide greater financial independence. With recent changes to reverse mortgages, it's more important than ever to make a decision based on current facts rather than outdated information. If you think you know everything there is to know about reverse mortgages, the truth is, you probably don't. And I have to admit, I was skeptical at first based on what I thought I knew, but then I realized how misinformed I really was. Many people are surprised to learn that today's reverse mortgages have been redesigned and can provide greater help to consumers. As a result, they can be an effective option to help fund the retirement you want. Call Reverse Mortgage Funding today for a free copy of Closing the Gap. It has the most current information about new products, including those designed to help you extend your retirement funds or to purchase a new home. My reverse mortgage gave me the benefits of a home equity line of credit without the monthly loan payments, and they've made the process really easy. Retirement and retirees have changed, and so have reverse mortgages. You owe it to yourself to see how today's reverse mortgages are meeting the needs of a new retirement generation. To find out how, call Reverse Mortgage Funding now and get the facts. We based our decision on current information, not hearsay, which was really a smart move for us. It changed our entire retirement outlook. Call toll-free 1-877-272-3738 for your free copy of Closing the Gap. There's no obligation, so call 1-877-272-3738 today. That's 1-877-272-3738. Loan terms and conditions apply. Visit ReverseMinded.com for details. Do you own mutual funds? You may be paying fees and costs of up to 5% and not even know it. Fisher Investments isn't a mutual fund, and we don't have hidden fees. Do you own an annuity? Your broker may have made a commission of 8% or more when he sold it to you. Are you sure he had your best interests in mind? At Fisher Investments, we're not brokers, and we don't earn commissions on trades or by selling you products. With our model, as your portfolio grows, 
we grow. To learn more about the Fisher Investments difference, call the number on your screen now. We'll send you our free DVD, Investing Secrets for 2015, and our special report, The Eight Biggest Mistakes Investors Make. Plus, call us today and get a free one-year subscription to Fisher Investments Stock Market Outlook with insights from our company founder and respected market forecaster, Ken Fisher. Be prepared in 2015. Call now, 1-800-780-3800. 1-800-780-3800. And welcome back to Daily Wrap, everybody. It's time for yay or nay. And as anyone who lives in the Northeast or, you know, kind of watches the news knows, this winter, as we talked about, has been brutal, especially in Massachusetts. But one entrepreneur there now selling bottles of the white stuff. And no, we're not talking about, what, what's an alcohol that's, held in, uh, that, that's white, I guess, uh, Kahlua? Is that white? Oh, yeah. yeah, Kahlua. No, we're not talking about Kahlua. <laughs> we're talking about snow, as you see on your screen, to people around the country through his website. Write it down, shipsnowyo.com. Yes, the gentleman has now sold more than 100 densely packed water bottles of genuine Massachusetts snow for about $20 a bottle. You do the math, and he's pocketing about $2,000. I'm sure he's reporting to the federal government. According to the site, they are literally drowning in snow over there, and they would be more than happy to ship some fresh snow to your friends, family, and enemies from historic Boston. They just want the stuff out of there. So, where did he get the idea for all this? Perhaps from the movie Better Off Dead with John Cusack and the guy who played Booger in the Revenge of the Nerds movies. You know, if I could just get past this first lift, the rest would be a breeze. I know it. I'm telling you, Charles. Charles? Charles. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. Wait one second. I think I'm onto something here. This is pure snow. It's everywhere. Have you any idea what the street value of this mountain is? Charles. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it. Ah! Oh! Oh! Outrageous! I think I froze the left half of my brain! Look! I can't move my right arm! Will you get serious? John T. Armstrong, I believe. I'm not going to look it up, but John T. Armstrong. He had a nice run in the 80s. And he was also on Moonlighting when Bruce Willis and Civil <laughs> Shepard were having a contractual dispute, so he and Mr. Pesto uh, like, got their own episode. <laughs> <laughs> we're completely going off on a tangent here. Uh, selling snow to help save Massachusetts, yay or nay, John? Uh, well, I mean, it's good for him. If they did it with New York snow, though, it'd be like a legalized weapon because it's uh, so dirty and nasty here after uh, the winter that we've had. It's uh, it's probably very poisonous. Crap, there goes yeah. that idea. Heather? I'm from Massachusetts. Anything that helps them get it out of there is good with me. Sure, because putting 20 bottles in, in water bottles, yeah, that'll really gonna <laughs> get you completely get a whole get it lot out. of it. I think it's okay as long as he didn't get it from a dog park. <laughs> <laughs> he makes a very good point, everybody. So if you do go to that website and order snow, and it happens to have a tint of yellow, ask for your money back. Security of State John Kerry has flip flop on yet another issue, and this time he may have really screwed the pooch. Mr. Kerry trying to discredit Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's view on what he thinks needs to be done to stop Iran from building nuclear bombs. And on Wednesday, he did so and actually discredited the top national security officials in the Obama administration, including himself in the process. This is what Mr. Kerry said. The prime minister was profoundly forward-leaning and outspoken about the importance of invading Iraq under George W. Bush. We all know what happened with that decision. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Kerry support the Iraq war in 2003? I believe he was for it before he was against it. Yes, he did. Uh, and most of uh, Mr. Obama's staff... Uh, also voted for that war. So John Kerry, should he be banned from public speaking from this day forward, Jonathan Gillian? I think we should do what the Greeks do, did in years, you know, thousands of years ago, where every 10 years they vote on a person that they ban from the country and they exile them. And whoever's you go done with the Kerry. most, he's one of them. Wow. I'm not saying it's him, but he's definitely one of them. And I also think he's probably saying really good things. He just, you can't understand him because his face doesn't matter. Right, right. Uh, you would go Kerry, I would go Kanye, but that's just me. Oh, Heather, no, quickly. Those are both right. good options. I just think that when the whole world is looking at a specific issue and you're speaking on that issue, you should be very careful about what you say. Okay, mm. so yay, yeah, nay. Mm, yay, <coughs> If you work for Obama, you have to drink the Kool-Aid. I think that it comes from up top. 
uh, Obama is no friend to Israel, and uh, it's the first time in many, many years where we've been that acrimonious with them, and I think it's a tragedy. Okay, I will take that as a nay. John Kerry has now been muted, or at least, uh, what is what is that called when you send, he's, he's been censured by the and Daily yes, uh, Rant right. uh, panel. <laughs> very, very good, guys. Good work. Well, were you guys ever bullied in school? I don't think Jonathan was. Was it ever by a school employee? Well, get this, 33-year-old Rosa Rios has been charged with burglary and theft for stealing, get your cameras ready, the lunch money of about 29 New Jersey school children right out of their backpacks. Oh, were they high school kids? Oh no, these were kids between the ages of three and five. Rios was an employee for Shepherd Bus Services. Her bail is currently at, and Heather, you'll probably agree with this, $50,000. Is that a severe enough punishment, Heather Hansen? Well, that's just the bail. We have to see what her actual potential jail time is. It depends on what that is and what her excuse is. But I think right now, just looking at the picture, she deserves to do some time. That's a yay. Rob, yay or nay? Put her away. No, wow, I love that pithy. <laughs> Let the John. kids beat her with their uh, lunch boxes and put her away. Wow, yeah. like a, a, you take a sack lunch and just, actually just yeah. yeah, just apples and everything, just wow. crap. That sounds like something that you'd see in like a black ops That's kind right. of uh, uh, facility. Outstanding. Well, thank you, panel, for being here. Very much appreciate it. And that's our show for this evening. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you tune in again tomorrow night at 6 p.m. for more daily wrap right here on Newsmax TV. I'm Joe Concha saying good night and good luck. He talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. I don't see anything being done except a lot of fear-mongering with liberals and climate change. Uh, I, look, I grew up in New Jersey. We had to drive up and down the turnpike. When I was a kid, my father used to say, hold your breath, because the right, pollution around is so bad. 13, it's, it's gotten, not nice. it's better. I'm, I'm for a good ecology and taking care of our country, but I don't think that it should be used as a political tool, which is uh, what I think Obama's doing. Well, and it's become about politics in every way, politics and money. You know, we talk about the research and the people who are doing the research are being paid by the climate companies. It's sort of like big pharma, where some of these doctors are being paid by the pharmaceutical companies. When you, th those things come together, when you've got money and politics and power influencing science, it can never be a good idea. Well, the, the, the contrarian argument is that science has settled the issue that there is climate change or the earth is warming. I think, to your point, and I completely agree with you, what is the degree as to which it's warming? Is it something that we need to take care of right now? Is there a sense of urgency? Or is it something that is manageable? And I, I think that's, you're exactly right. Whenever you bring up like, well, it's not that big of a deal. How dare you say that? Because New York, if you, if you read some stories in the 80s, we should all be underwater right now. Right. On, on Manhattan Island and Miami shouldn't exist. And you know, mm -hmm. watch Al Gore's uh, documentary sometime. The uh, Earth has been in existence for billions of years, and they're saying we're going to destroy it in 100. Uh, it's, it's ludicrous if you look at it in those terms. It's ludicrous if you look at my backyard. <laughs> I have not <laughs> off and spread it all over the world. Social and media. When we talk about Jihadi, Jihadi John, who they've now um, you know, told everybody who he is, mm -hmm. I look at that as about as significant as each of the individuals that he beheads. That it's a human life and that's significant, but over the overall fight for this war, it doesn't really do anything if we rescue one person or if they get killed. We need to start, you know, battling this entire uh, movement. And so Jihadi John is a is a thing that they can pump up and say, hey, we're doing this or we're doing that, uh, the politicians that is, and it, but it really doesn't do anything for the overall picture. The other thing that I did want to say though is that we this is a two front war just like in World War II. The other front is the progressive socialist movement, and it's spread in all all over the world into these into our government systems, and in an effort to take it over, just like communism tried to do, but they're actually su successful at doing it. We have them in our administration today. We have one uh, that's our president, and uh, they take so advantage. You're comfortable calling President Obama a socialist? Anybody that is not willing to look at that as either uh, trying to side with him because they agree with him or they haven't done their homework and investigate. I'm a trained investigator. Mm -hmm. I look at the facts. I let the facts, you know, guide my opinions. And uh, you, I'm like Rick Unger in the way that I look at things uh, and I try to find out what the solutions are to these. A solution-based thinker. When you do investigations, you try to look at what. I want to see an executive? They should not, not, not fly them over anything. That's why it should be banned because there'll be a banned. government commission on drones. Otherwise, and they'll just wreck everything. Well, the news right. came out today that the Secret Service is now flying drones around Washington but they're today. Federal, they're but, but they're doing controlled. it to, I think, to try to counter and find out where the drones are, how they can intercept them. They're talking. About 
about using wireless routers to try and scramble the they signal. They need to figure it out because they've so they landed one in the White well, House. Well, that's about right. Two I mean, clearly ago. you're mm -hmm. right. Whether it's regulation or whether it's investigation to figure out what the heck is going on, because we just don't know enough. And then not even cities, but then it could be on the the campaign trail. And let's say there's a candidate in Iowa somewhere. Mm -hmm. You fly it out of one field and right into the crowd. And I just. That scares the hell out of me. And I, into your now problem. you scared me more. They're you a are a fear monger. <laughs> and on that note, that's all the time we have for our potluck tonight. But when we come back, it's yay or nay. This is the Daily Wrap, making you sleep very well at night. And it's only here on Newsmax TV from very cold New York City, despite climate change. You know, just before retirement, I had that uh-oh moment. It is not a great feeling. I worked hard, I saved money, but then I realized I wasn't going to have enough. If you're age 62 or older and facing a financial gap, your home's equity could provide greater financial independence. With recent changes to reverse mortgages, it's more important than ever to make a decision. Crowd, I just... That scares the hell out of me. And I, into your now problem. you scared me more. They're you a are a fear monger. <laughs> and on that note, that's all the time we have for our potluck tonight. But when we come back, it's yay or nay. This is the Daily Wrap, making you sleep very well at night. And it's only here on Newsmax TV from very cold New York City, despite climate change. You know, just before retirement, I had that uh-oh moment. It is not a great feeling. I worked hard, I saved money, but then I realized I wasn't going to have enough. If you're age 62 or older and facing a financial gap, your home's equity could provide greater financial independence. With recent changes to reverse mortgages, it's more important than ever to make a decision based on current facts rather than outdated information. If you think you know everything there is to know about reverse mortgages, the truth is, you probably don't. And I have to admit, I was skeptical at first based on what I thought I knew, but then I realized how misinformed I really was. Many people are surprised to learn that today's reverse mortgages have been redesigned and can provide greater help to consumers. As a result, they can be an effective option to help fund the retirement you want. Call Reverse Mortgage Funding today for a free copy of Closing the Gap. It has the most current information about new products, including those designed to help you extend your retirement. No muss, no fuss, no heat, and complete control. The facial wand gives me a lot of control when I'm applying it. No, no it didn't hurt at all. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> it looks like she did it in the salon. Oh my gosh. For eye-catching eyebrows, get Nad's facial wand eyebrow shaper today. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic. Some will never return. With thy blessing, we shall prevail over the unholy forces of our enemy. Thy will be done, almighty God. Amen. And welcome back to The Daily Wrap. I am your host, Joe Concha. And if you're just joining us, we're in the middle of our potluck dinner where we share our favorite stories of the day. Rob, what is your culinary well, masterpiece? I read a great piece today by Rich Lowry in the National Review where he kicks it off by saying, let the climate inquisition begin. He is comparing liberal attitude towards climate change to anybody that disagrees with them to a new level of McCarthyism. And... Uh, I think he's right. I think it's unfair because you're not allowed to have a dissenting opinion. That's their part. This Austrian bill was to say that it will improve those relationships because now we are trying to make it a sort of a kinder, gentler. Islam. Well, then again, we're getting into government control. Well, right, okay. and that's why here it would be difficult to pass. But we do limit those types of things in certain circumstances, so there could arguably be a slippery slope there. I, I saw a story today as well about the Mississippi cops are now being trained uh, to speak Spanish. It's mandatory that they know how because mm -hmm. of the influx of immigrants that much into that state. So instead of learning, hey, here's here's how you engage somebody who may be robbing a liquor store, it's, right. you know, now you have to know how to say yo no say and, 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 and you know how to speak Spanish in general. Well, listen, the law enforcement needs to start thinking outside the box. And if that's the people who are going to be coming there because this government has allowed them to, then they're going to have to start reacting to that.
And that's our last word in a segment that was dominated by uh, Mr. Gilliam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, we have to take a quick break, but we'll have more political potluck. This is the Daily Wrap, only on Newsmax TV. Hi, I'm Matt McCoy. How long have you had your car insurance? I ask because I had mine for over 20 years. Before I switched and saved hundreds with the AARP auto insurance program from the Hartford. I was with my previous insurance uh, for 30 years, but they could not compete with the Hartford. People 50 and over could save hundreds of dollars when... Mortgage. Quicken Loans is here to help you save your money. Why Quicken Loans? The home loan experts at Quicken Loans fully understand the HARP guidelines. We'll work with you to understand your specific circumstances and strive to find the financial solution that's best for you. Then we'll guide you through each step of the mortgage refinance process to make sure that it's both simple and easy. And for five years in a row now, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. And this year, for the first time, They've also ranked us highest in the nation in mortgage servicing. If you're not familiar with HARP, it's a U.S. government program designed specifically for homeowners who have little or no equity. A great feature of the HARP program is that most HARP refinance loans do not require an appraisal, and there are fewer income verification requirements. That makes it simpler, easier, and even faster. And even if you've been denied for a HARP loan in the past, New guidelines mean that you now may be eligible. Give us a call and we'll give you a Quicken Loans Mortgage Review. And we'll do all we can to help you save money on your mortgage. It's simple and easy. So find out if you're eligible to take advantage of today's incredibly low interest rates and start saving money every month on your mortgage. Call Quicken Loans today. And that is our final word on that segment. Coming up next, it's time for some potluck. This is The Daily Wrap, only on Newsmax TV. Right now, we have big problems in America. Our veterans are being forgotten. Instead of coming home to the support they gave so much for, they're finding empty promises. They're missing the medical treatment they were promised, the jobs they need to survive, the benefits they fought for. But even worse, every day, 22 veterans are dying because what little help they're getting is coming too late. It's time we do what Americans have always done when someone needs help. We get her done. There's an organization that is doing all they can to help our veterans, the American Legion. Because of the monthly donations from Americans just like you, the American Legion has helped represent over 700,000 VA benefit claims for veterans. In this past year alone, they have helped over 800 veterans find good jobs. And they're breaking through the backlog and standing by our veterans until they get the medical help they so desperately need. Our veterans have given us so much. It's time we as Americans repay that debt. Okay, and do we still have Rick Unger on the phone? I know we had some technical you difficulties do. there. Excellent, sir. So what's on the agenda for tonight? 30 seconds. Uh, tonight is going to be a lot of drinking, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Nothing that would interest you, Joe. Right, right. Wow, Rick Unger on the road and getting overserved. <laughs> what a shock. We have to leave you now, Rick, so have fun with those apple martinis, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon, buddy. I'll talk to you all tomorrow night. Miss you all. Okay, good to see you. Uh, well, the latest uh, Re National Republican poll, uh, excuse me, the latest National Republican poll from public policy polling, say that fast five times, finds, and let's put it up on the screen, Governor Scott Walker surging at 25%, and there we have Dr. Ben Carson at 18 Jeb Bush at a surprising 17%, and Governor Mike Huckabee somehow at 10%. Rounding out the field are Chris Christie and Ted Cruz at 5, Rand Paul at 4, Rick Perry and Marco Rubio at 3, and I don't even see Ohio Governor John Kasich on there, who, as we know, will eventually win the nomination if he runs. You heard it here first, but only from me, of course, maybe not from my panel. So, uh, quickly, guys, we only have a minute. 
Are you surprised that Scott Walker is surging? Well, sort of and sort of not. I mean, he kind of comes off as the normal guy out there, you know. But the fact is, what I see across the board with all these people, with the exception of Dr. Carson, are people who went from high school to college into politics. Mm -hmm. and when I did my research on them and I started looking at them, there's no life experience in any of these leaders. And I have a problem with that. What do you think about Carly Fiorina? She's, she's got some life experience. Republican poll from public policy polling, say that fast five times, finds, and let's put it up on the screen, Governor Scott Walker surging at 25%. And there we have Dr. Ben Carson at 18, Jeb Bush at a surprising 17%, and Governor Mike Huckabee somehow at 10%. Rounding out the field are Chris Christie and Ted Cruz at five, Rand Paul at four, Rick Perry and Marco Rubio at three, and I don't even see Ohio Governor John Kasich on there, who, as we know, will eventually win the nomination if he runs. You heard it here first, but only from me, of course, maybe not from my panel. So, uh, quickly, guys, we only have a minute. Are you surprised that Scott Walker is surging? Well, sort of and sort of not. I mean, he kind of comes off as the normal guy out there, you know. But the fact is, what I see across the board with all these people, with the exception of Dr. Carson, are people who went from high school to college into politics. Mm -hmm. and when I did my research on them and I started looking at them, there's no life experience in any of these leaders. And I have a problem with that. What do you think about Carly Fiorina? She's, she's got some life experience, right? She has right? some life experience. You know, the problem I have, or the thing I like about Dr. Ben Carson is that he doesn't subscribe to party lines, technically. Uh, can I interject? Sure. I think that Scott Ten Walker seconds. is a fresh face. Mm -hmm. uh, people that attend CPAC think the world is still flat. So the rest of the country is going to lean more towards somebody like Walker. He's backed by the people that backed Romney and he's succeeded in a very liberal state. Certainly seems to have the momentum right now. Well, coming up next on The Daily Wrap, your internet just got regulated by the federal government. This uh, for blackmail to protect uh, the actions of the president, uh, where the president himself said he didn't have the authority to do this. Of course, Mr. Boehner would not be goaded into the House's hand if a clean bill is passed in the Senate. Plus, he got a little cheeky. Are you going to put it on the floor? Are you going to kill it? You can let him vote on it. Have you even had this discussion? <laughs> when we make decisions, I'll let you know. We passed a bill to fund the department six weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, well, how many times do I have to say it? And Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. I'm sorry, I said majority. <laughs> Minority. Wow, that still takes some getting used to. Said today that he believes the House is wasting everybody's time. We've had all kinds of rumors that the House is going to take our fully funded bill and send it back with a number of writers on it. It is a waste of time. We will not allow a conference to take place. It won't happen. I don't know if it's crazy people. It's like an eighth grade civic class. I mean, what is going on in the House? And if the president does get a bill that attempts to shut down his executive order on immigration, this is what he will do. So in the short term, if uh, Mr. McConnell, the uh, leader of the Senate, uh, and the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, uh, want to have a vote on whether what I'm doing is legal or not. They can have that vote. I will veto that vote because I'm absolutely confident that what we're doing is fundamental Islam which I like to call it Mohammedism. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same Islam that was practiced before uh, the Sunni and Shia split. Uh, same tactics, same uh, techniques, and same drive and motivation. Um, and that has spread all over the world. Literally, it's the first unconventional war, world war, that has ever existed. Because now, we see, unconventional tactics normally only work in one area. Yeah, because before modern technologies, you couldn't spread all, fear all over the world. Now, in an instant, you know, you can cut someone's head off and spread it all over the world. Social and media. When we talk about jihadi, jihadi John, who they've now, um, you know, told everybody who he is, mm -hmm. I look at that as about as significant as each of the individuals that he beheads. That it's a human life and that's significant, but over the overall fight for this war, it doesn't really do anything if we rescue one person or if they get killed. We need to start, you know, battling this entire uh, movement. And so Jihadi John is a, is a thing that they can pump up and say, hey, we're doing this or we're doing that, uh, the politicians that is, and it, but it really doesn't do anything for the overall picture. The other thing that I did want to say though, is that we, this is a two front war just like in World War II. The other front is the progressive socialist movement. 
and it spread in all all over the world into these into our government systems and in an effort to take it over just like communism tried to do but they're actually needs to be done to stop Iran from building nuclear bombs and on Wednesday he did so and actually discredited the top national security officials in the Obama administration, including himself in the process. This is what Mr. Kerry said. The prime minister was profoundly forward-leaning and outspoken about the importance of invading Iraq under George W. Bush. We all know what happened with that decision. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Kerry support the Iraq war in 2003? I believe he was for it before he was against it. Yes, he did. Uh, and most of uh, Mr. Obama's staff uh, also voted for that war. So John Kerry, should he be banned from public speaking from this day forward, Jonathan Gillian? I think we should do what the Greeks do, did in years, you know, thousands of years ago, where every 10 years they vote on a person that they ban from the country and they exile them. And whoever's you go with the Kerry. Most, he's one of them. Wow. I'm not saying it's him, but he's definitely one of them. And I also think he's probably saying really good things. He just, you can't understand him because his face doesn't matter. Right, right. I, you would go Kerry, <laughs> I would go Kanye, but that's just me. Oh, Heather, no, quickly. Those are both right. good options. I just think that when the whole world is looking at a specific issue and you're speaking on that issue, you should be very careful about what you say. Okay, mm. so yay, nay. Mm, yay, man. <laughs> if you work for Obama, you have to drink the Kool-Aid. I think that it comes from up top. Uh, Obama is no friend to Israel, and uh, it's the first time in many, many years where we've been that acrimonious with them, and I think it's a tragedy. Okay, I will take that as a nay, John. <laughs> when we make decisions, I'll let you know. We passed a bill to fund the department six weeks ago. How <laughs> I many times do I have to say it? Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, oh, I'm sorry, I said majority, <laughs> minority, wow, that still takes some getting used to, said today that he believes the House is wasting everybody's time. We've had all kinds of rumors that the House is going to take our fully funded bill and send it back with a number of writers on it. It is a waste of time. We will not allow a conference to take place. It won't happen. I don't know if it's crazy people. It's like an eighth grade civic class. I mean, what is going on in the House? And if the president does get a bill that attempts to shut down his executive order on immigration, this is what he will do. So in the short term, if uh, Mr. McConnell, the uh, leader of the Senate, uh, and the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, uh, want to have a vote on whether what I'm doing is legal or not, they can have that vote. I will veto that vote because I'm absolutely confident that what we're doing is the right thing to do. Well, Heather Hansen, Speaker Boehner is holding or throwing up uh, Senate Democrats as far as they're the ones that are the ones that are holding this up. But let's face it, I mean, this is more of a Republican Republican problem between the Senate Republicans and Senate, Senate uh, Repo I'm sorry, House Republicans. It is ridiculous to me that they never went on the offense. It was constantly on the defense. How <laughs> I many times do I have to say it? Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, I'm sorry, I said majority, <laughs> minority, wow, that still takes some getting used to, said today that he believes the House is wasting everybody's time. We've had all kinds of rumors that the House is going to take our fully funded bill and send it back with a number of writers on it. It is a waste of time. We will not allow a conference to take place. It won't happen. I don't know if it's crazy people. It's like an eighth grade civic class. I mean, what is going on in the House? And if the president does get a bill that attempts to shut down his executive order on immigration, this is what he will do. So in the short term, if uh, Mr. McConnell, the uh, leader of the Senate uh, and the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, uh, want to have a vote on whether what I'm doing is legal or not, they can have that vote. I will veto that vote because I'm absolutely confident that what we're doing is the right thing to do. Well, Heather Hansen, Speaker Boehner is holding or throwing up uh, Senate Democrats as far as they're the ones that are the ones that are holding this up. But let's face it, I mean, this is more of a Republican Republican problem between the Senate Republicans and Senate, Senate uh, Repo I'm sorry, House Republicans. It is ridiculous to me that they never went on the offense. It was constantly on the defense. From the time of the first filibuster, they should have been out there saying that Democrats are putting amnesty before security, 